Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Normally, we're trying to do things cheaper, but today we're going to try and do things smaller. Today, we're going to take a look at the Zotac ER51060. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the Zotac Z Box range. Now, this is part of the E range of barebone all-in-one PCs. Now, all-in-one is probably not a fair description. This, actually saying that, barebone is probably not a fair description either. This is pretty much ready to go out of the box. All you need to do is add storage, RAM, and operating system. Other than that, pretty much all the bases are covered. Obviously, you will need things like keyboard, mouse, monitor, that sort of thing, but essentially, this is ready to go. So this comprises of a small case, or box, however you want to put it, processor, graphics card, motherboard, power supply. So the key components to get a system up and running. So let's quickly open the box and see what we actually get for the money. Now speaking of money, this is the moment is retailing in the UK for around about £650. So I suppose that equates to nearly $700 thereabouts. So it isn't cheap. So, like I said, normally we try and save money on this channel, but today we're gonna to try and save some space, so um, something's gotta give, and unfortunately, it's the budget. So, you do pay a little bit more of a premium for this kind of thing, but I think it's worth it. You'll have to let me know what you think when you see it. So, this is a review sample that was sent over to me uh, from Zotac UK, which I'm very grateful of. So, we're not gonna do a massive teardown because it's not actually my product, so I don't wanna damage it, wreck it, break it, etc. No doubt Zotac wouldn't be very happy with me either. But there we go, there is the box itself. Now this thing is tiny, it really is tiny. So effectively, it's roughly about the same size as a very small ITX motherboard, and height-wise you're looking about four or five inches. This thing is gonna to be totally acceptable in a lounge, living room, uh, office space, wherever you want it to be. It's very small, very compact, and it'll fit in pretty much everywhere. So if you don't have the room for a big tower, such as that thing behind, and you don't want all the RGB bling of modern PCs, this is going to be totally up your street. Now, initially when I first saw this, I thought to myself, mm, it's basically it's a media center, an expensive one at that. But after taking it apart and taking a look inside, it's actually a lot more than that. So let's look at around the front of it first of all. So we have got a large power button with uh, an illuminated surround, which we'll see illuminated a little bit later. You've got some I.O. ports, you've got a full-size SD card reader, you've got a USB 3.1 port, you've got a microphone port, headphone port, and a USB Type-C port. Now, the audio ports on the front, I can kind of understand because it would be nice and simple. If you've got a headset, just plug it in. But if you're one of those people who like to keep your headset left plugged in, and you don't want wires trailing everywhere, it does kind of spoil that nice, neat look. And there actually isn't a... Uh, another port the same as that on the rear that you can plug into. So if you are a headphone or microphone user and you're not going to use USB, then that is your only option on the front. Now on this side, nothing at all, just a solid metal panel. On the rear, we have got an absolute ton of I.O. considering its small size. So working from one side to the other, we've got a aerial jack you can plug in. The aerials are supplied there in the box, we'll get those out in a little bit. So we've got one, two, three, four USB 3.0 ports. We've got dual gigabit LAN, the power input jack for a DC 19 volt power supply, another aerial connector, because you've got dual band Wi-Fi, and here is the graphics card. Now this is effectively the Zotac 1060 three gig mini, which is a desktop part, but it's not in a desktop chassis. So they've done some really clever work in there with the motherboard and the setup to get a desktop grade GPU actually in this chassis. Now ports on this, you've got three display ports, one HDMI and one DVI. So you can connect up to, well, I would say realistically three monitors would be the ideal setup for this. If you're using it in a kind of surround environment, maybe for video editing or gaming, perfect outputs, lots of power, suitable for 1080p gaming or 4K gaming. So moving around to the other side, the last side, we've got a 92mm fan behind there. So you've got some ventilation there. Now ventilation actually, 
is quite a concern in a box this small because you've got a desktop grade GPU, which is the Ryzen 5 1400, which is actually a 3.2 gigahertz chip with a turbo of 3.4, four cores, eight threads. So it is effectively a desktop PC. So airflow is gonna be important. Now the desktop Ryzen generally doesn't need a massive amount of cooling, so that's a, a plus point. And also the 1060 three gigabyte, again, is a relatively low powered card, so it doesn't need a great deal of cooling but there is a lot of cooling. So you've got 32 mil fan on the side with ventilation. The top honeycomb effect is actually just a massive air filter. Plenty of areas to get air in and out of the system. So cooling hopefully isn't gonna be a problem, but we'll find out more when we do some testing a little bit later. Now moving to the bottom of the machine. Also again, you've got ventilation around the four sides. So natural convection, cold air going in underneath, coming out through the top and also the GPU is gonna be exhausting most of the heat out of this grill from the back. And also this grill here is for the fan for the CPU. Now this is my only kind of gripe. The fan for the CPU is one of those kind of like graphics card fans, which is a blower style fan effectively. Now again, because of the size of the system, you can't really expect anything more than that. And at least with a blower fan, all the hot air is gonna be exhausted straight out the back rather than kind of recycled around the chassis, which there isn't a great deal of room inside the chassis for it to recycle around. So the blower style fan, although slightly noisier than normal fans, is probably gonna be better in this chassis. Talking of which, let's open the chassis up and see what it's like inside. Now the chassis itself is actually relatively straightforward to open up. Now the access to the hard drive area and the memory area is done by these clever feet, which double up as thumb screws. So just four feet and that will give you access to the easiest bits of the machine to upgrade. So just remove the top and that's a, a, a plastic top, but it's actually very thick plastic. So yeah, plastic top, although it's got some kind of uh, weird metallic kind of spray paint over there to give the illusion of metal, but it definitely isn't. The only metal there is these grills, which in fact, they could be plastic as well. Anyway, I digress. So inside the machine, uh, let's go around what we've got. So we've got a aerial, which runs across the back of the motherboard. We've also got a, another blower style fan, which is to keep the uh, chipset cool. We've got two RAM slots. And at the moment we've got these populated with some ADATA XPG DDR2400 RAM. Two sticks making 16 gigs in total, so two times eight. And on this side, we've got a thumb screw held in Samsung drive. So a simple thumb screw turn. You can remove the hard disk, oh, sorry, SSD. Now this one is a Samsung uh, 850 Pro, 512 gig, which is gonna be more than enough storage for what we're planning on doing. But if you wanted to, you can put a M.2 drive in there, plus a mechanical drive if you want to for mass storage. Again, it's relatively flexible. You can put two drives in there, one two and a half inch, one M.2 up to 2280 size. So storage options are uh, pretty good, especially considering the size. Okay, so that's the easy bit of it taken apart. Now the rest of it can actually be taken apart and you have got relatively good access inside there. So around the top of the system, there's about nine small screws, which in turn will then remove this dust filter or top, whichever you wanna call it. Underneath there is another metal frame, which is removed with five screws. And then once you remove that, you've got access to the CPU area and also the GPU area. Now the GPU is powered by a single eight pin connector of which it only uses six of those eight pins. So if you were considering doing an upgrade at some point in the future for another card, as long as it's uh, similar dimensions to the 1060 mini, then you could put another graphics card in there. Again, the, um, the graphics card would need to be within the wattage limitations of the system, which I think is around about 250 watts in total. So obviously do be careful if you plan on doing that. Although most people I'd imagine who are buying this are gonna be buying it and just gonna keep it pretty much as it is, bone stock for the foreseeable. So again, this takes us back to who is likely to buy this type of box. Now for me, I would Im imagine most people buying this are gonna be reasonably affluent people, perhaps uh, graphic designers, video editors, casual gamers, who want a PC in their house or want to work in a, a nice quiet environment with a small PC that doesn't take up a massive amount of room, but also fits into the decor and design of their house. This box basically could be put pretty much anywhere. You don't have to have it on your desk. Obviously being a PC, you can put it pretty much where you want with extension cables. 
Uh, but for me personally, I think I'll be using it in our testing purposes with it on the desk and with access to all the ports and things like that. And also to get a good gauge of how noisy it is under full load or gaming conditions. So that's a brief overview of the system and a quick look at the outsides, the IO ports. Let's get it set up and see how it actually runs. Okay, so it wouldn't be a proper test without some uh, some Fortnite, so let's get straight into the game. Now, I am actually rubbish at this, so this is going to be probably quite short-lived. But, we're getting some pretty decent frame rates. Okay, so we've got a gun, that's a great start. Now, I haven't got a clue what to do in this game, to be honest with you. So, let's just run around and see if we can get killed. Again, this is with uh, epic settings, and we're currently anywhere between, well, 60 frames per second and well, getting up into the 70s, higher 70s, depending on where we are on the map. Okay, let's just head into the middle of the map and see if there's anybody about. I'm sure there should be a faster way of getting to the middle of the map than this. I suppose it doesn't really matter because I do suck at this. And there's somebody over there. Uh oh. Ah. Well, I suck, but at least it showed the game being played. So, 60 frames per second is no problem at all on Epic settings with this setup. So, it should be, it should prove to be a pretty enjoyable experience, even if you are rubbish at it, like I am. Okay, so we've been running the Unigine Heaven benchmark for a little while now, and the GPU's getting up to mid-70s, still getting great frames per second, and not really seeing much throttling. Now, if I get closer to the actual machine, you can hear the fans ramping up and ramping back down, but it's not too bad at all. So that is with the mic, the lav mic, probably about four or five inches away from the top of the unit. So that's probably peaking a little bit. But again, that's under full load. So if we uh, quit out of that, and we should find that things settle down quite quickly. So I can already hear the fans ramping back down. So underneath those loads, We've had a CPU temperature of up to 63 degrees. At our lowest being 37, again for this small chassis, that's still pretty respectable and well, well away from the kind of thermal max. Going down to the GPU, looks like we've maxed out about 73 degrees, uh, idle temperature about 26, which is a few degrees above the ambient. And at the moment we're at around about 50 and it's continuing to drop. So performance wise and noise wise, not bad at all. Okay, so there you go. We've had some uh, a little bit of gameplay testing on there. I am rubbish at games, so uh, don't let that dishearten you against purchasing one of these. So, in summary, what do I think? Well, it's very flexible. Now, comparatively, this is my older AM1 mini PC, which is virtually the same size as this box. A little bit smaller, but there's not a lot in it. Yet, this is a ITX motherboard with probably like a, maybe a, 60 70 watt power supply if that it's got no power no real upgradability and no room for a graphics card is running at apu so essentially it's fine for watching tv some movies general web surfing that kind of thing but other than that it's pretty much useless but the zotac on the other hand is a tiny bit bigger a little bit more expensive but packs an awful punch when it comes to gaming and productivity. Now I was going to try Adobe Premiere, but I can't seem to get it installed at the moment, which is a problem with my account, but that's another story. Overall, I think this is a great little PC. If you're stuck for room, or you just want something which isn't going to take up the entire desk or space, a great option. And also the flexibility of being able to pretty much strip the whole thing down, add in new parts, new RAM, new hard disk drives, SSDs, M.2s, maybe even change the processor if you can get one which is suitable for the motherboard's BIOS which should be most of the Ryzen chips, give or take, but don't quote me to that. Check it out with Zotac at our website, which uh, I'll link below. But essentially, this is everything you could want from a desktop PC, but in a lot smaller form factor. So, like I said, if you want to save a lot of space, not necessarily save some money, but save a lot of space on your desktop, then this is definitely worth looking at. 
So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. This has been the super tiny Zotac ER5 1060 and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.